Hello and welcome to SPSS in 15 minutes. My name is Alexander. The goal of this video is to get you up and running with SPSS, to start using it um, in just under 15 minutes. In this video, I will tackle defining variables, entering data, uh, and analyzing your data using descriptive statistics such as frequencies and other summary statistics. So I think we should get started right away. Right, so I've opened SPSS. You see that the interface may look similar if you have ever used Microsoft Excel, it looks like a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is divided into two. There is the data view here, which is where you see your actual data, and there's the variable view, which is where you actually define and edit the questions that you've been asking on your survey or whatever questionnaire that you have. The first thing that you do when you come to SPSS, if you don't have data, is obviously to bring data in. And what I would do is I'll show you how you can create variables and enter data. Right, so I have a little questionnaire that I be using. Um, the first variable I have on my questionnaire is interview ID. The uh, rule of uh, the variable names is such that you need to not include any spaces in the name and no symbols and, um, uh, or special, any special characters. Okay, so I'll just say interview ID. The type of the variable, I'll just click the button here, is basically how, in which format is the variable, is the, is the data of that variable going to come in. And uh, for interview ID, it's obviously gonna be numeric, it's basically just numbers, so I'll just go ahead and click okay. All right, the width is just um, the maximum number of characters that will be allowed for this variable when I'm entering data. For this variable, eight is quite generous, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Decimals, as you have suggested it, it actually, it's actually how many decimal places this um, variable is gonna have. For interview IDs, no decimal places. I'll just remove this so that it's zero. Right, I'm using the tab key on my keyboard to move to the next. So the label is how the name of this variable should actually appear when I'm doing analysis, of which I'm just gonna say interview with a space now ID. The values are the list of responses that are allowed for that uh, question. This is mostly for questions that are multiple choice, which the interview ID is not, gonna, is not going to be multiple choice. Missing is basically values that you are using to refer to missing um, values like not applicable or if the uh, question was not answered. We're not going to set this in this video. Columns is basically just how wide the column for this data is, um, for this variable is going to be when you go to the data view. Now, alignment is just whether it should, the data should be on left, right, or center. Measurement level is the, basically the type of the variable that you're dealing with uh, as regards to how you are measuring it. To make this easily understood, I'll just say that scale variables are variables that are talking about quantities. These are genuinely quantitative variables, like how many people are there in your household? You're talking about a number of people, which is obviously a quantity. Or how old are you? You're talking about the quantity of time. Or how long is it from here to the next borehole, which is the quantity of um, distance, length, and so on and so forth. That would be scale variables. Ordinal variables are variables that are represented by words, but you can say that one category or one value is obviously on top of another value in terms of, um, uh, in terms of quantity or in terms of quality. For example, um, if you think about um, education levels, uh, somebody who is at um, secondary school obviously has more education than one, someone who is at primary school. Or someone who is at tertiary school has more education than someone who is at uh, uh, secondary school, which means the variable education level should definitely be an ordinal variable. While nominal variable, basically, this is quite similar to the ordinal variable in that it's represented by words, but then you may not actually be able to say that one category or one value has um, uh, uh, more of the variable than another value, uh, another value in that variable. So for example, gender. Uh, gender, we cannot say that male has more gender or more sex than female. So this variable obviously is not ordinal, but rather it's nominal. Other nominal variables, uh, examples would be race or tribe or religious affiliation. We cannot say that Christianity 
or being Christian is more religion than Islam. They're just names of religions. That's where Nomino is coming from. So for interview ID, it's neither scale or Orino because these are just random numbers we are assigning to people. So it's gonna be Nomino. Let's go to the next one. The next one is gonna be the name of this person, so name. Now, name cannot be numeric, obviously, people, are, uh, we have to type as text. So you click the button, and you're going to select string. String means uh, text uh, variables. Go ahead and click OK. Um, and then you go ahead to insert the label, which is just going to be name. Uh, are you going to have any values? No. I may not be able to possibly know all the names so that I can fill them beforehand. So this is just going to be an open-ended question. No values, no multiple choice whatsoever. Most of new, um, string variables are nominal. So I'll just leave nominal as a default. The next variable is gender. Now, gender is going to be a numeric variable which begs the question, why? Gender, you have male and female, which are words, yes. But then, we don't want people to have problems entering the data, uh, uh, missing spellings and so on. This variable is very important. So what we do is we specify values. So we have numbers that represent the values of gender, which are words. So for example, say one is going to be standing for male and two stand for female. Before we get there, decimals, I'll change this to zero. The label is gonna be gender. Then we go to values, click the button, and the value one is gonna stand for male. Then you click add. The value two is gonna stand for female. And I'll click add, and that's enough. You click okay. That's how you set the values or multiple choice of a variable in SPSS. Right, then we go to measurement level. If you remember, I just mentioned that gender is a nominal variable because you cannot say that male has more gender than female. The next variable is gonna be age. Age is traditionally a numerical variable. It's quantitative. You may want it to have decimals or leave it like that. The label, I'll just say age. We're not going to put values because it's going to be open-ended. If you're 15 years old, you say 15. If you're 10 years old, you say 10. If you're 50 years old, you say 50. The measurement level, since this variable has a unit of measurement in years, and it's obviously numerical quantitative, it's talking about quantity of time, then it's going to be scale. The last variable is a question. Did you eat rice in the past seven days? So to make the name easy to read, I'll just say rice. Um, the type is going to be numeric, why? Because the response says yes and no, I'm just going to quote them or give them value. So zero is going to stand for no and one for yes. No decimals, right? Um, no, I have to type the whole question this time. So did you um, eat rice in the past seven days? I have to set the values, so I click the button. The values will be zero, is no, and one is yes. And I click add and I click OK. So we may debate here on the measurement level. Is this a scale variable? Or, uh, sorry, is this an ordinal variable or a nominal? It cannot be scale, because obviously you're talking about no and yes, which are words. But is it nominal? Um, can we say that yes is more than no? Yes, it is. Or is it nominal? So for uh, this variable, I'm just gonna put it add ordinal. Once you do that, it means we have defined all the variables. The next thing is to enter data. The way you have to switch data view to enter the data. Now, the way that we enter data is actually very straightforward. Uh, it's basically how you enter data in Microsoft Excel. But before we go there, I would say that go ahead and click this button here, which says value labels. That allows us to see, especially when the um, variable has values. So if we type one for male, it should actually show us male instead of showing us one. So you turn that on. Then we'll go ahead and start entering data.
So now that we have all the data in, the next step is now to uh, analyze our data. Okay, so to analyze your data, what you're gonna do is go to analyze, descriptive statistics. We'll start by looking at frequencies. Frequencies are just um, counts or a matter of uh, how many of this value do we have. This works much better for variables that don't have too many values. For example, for age, we have too many values of age, too many different values of age. While on gender, we only have a few values of gender. And uh, did you eat rice in the past seven days? We will actually also do have just two values. So when you're running frequencies, I would very much recommend that you run frequencies for variables that have a few categories, like gender and uh, did you eat rice in the past seven days. So what I'll do is, I'll, you drag the variable to the right-hand side. I'll drag the other one to the right-hand side as well. The next thing is I want to throw in a few options. I'll go to charts and say I want some um, bar charts, okay, with frequencies, not percentages, and I'll go ahead and click continue. Um, make sure that we are displaying frequency tables, especially if the variables are categorical or they are either um, uh, nominal or, or ordinal. Go ahead and click OK, and uh, we have our analysis. It's gender, there are, wow, 10 males and 10 females. It's interesting. And then, uh, did you eat rice in the past seven days? We had eight people who did not eat rice and 12 people actually ate rice. This is the chart for uh, males, uh, so, sorry, for gender, and this is the chart for rice. If you want to get this um, uh, chart or the table in another program like Microsoft Word, all you have to do is right click and copy. In Microsoft Word, you just go ahead and paste. And then you write whatever narrative you want to write. Let's go back to SPSS. How about a variable like age? All right, okay, go to analyze, descriptive statistics. We'll go back to frequencies. This time, I will reset this. Okay, by clicking the reset button, and then I'll throw in the variable h, which is a scale variable or a continuous variable. Now, for continuous variables, you may not want to use frequencies because you, there's a high probability that you have so many different values of this variable. What you want to do is to probably just go to statistics and say you want probably the mean, the median. Uh, maybe you also want the standard deviation and uh, the range, maybe the minimum and the maximum. You may also want the quartiles and click continue. When it comes to charts, you probably want to have a histogram, which is much um, the, the graph that you may want to actually run for variables that are continuous, like age. And you want to show the normal curve uh, on the histogram and click continue. The next thing that you should not forget is to turn off display frequency tables, because again, you have too many values, different values for this variable. So the table, which shows all the values and how many people there are on each of the value, that is not going to work very well. So 10 of this, and you click OK, and now you will see that we have a table of statistics which show us that uh, the average age is 20 years old, but the median age is 21, which is quite close. Uh, the standard deviation for age is 3.5, and it's, uh, the age ranged from a minimum of 13 and a maximum of 28. The first, um, at the top of the first 25% first people, the, um, is an 18 year old, and uh, the median, which is also known as a 50th percentile, is 21. And um, um, at 75% of the distribution, you have someone who is 22. 75 years old. And we have our histogram, which shows us that our data is roughly normally distributed with more people at the center, uh, which is at the median of 21. Um, and um, it's basically coming down here and coming down. So this is a very good variable if you want to go ahead and do other um, advanced analysis. If you want more learning, um, check out our YouTube channel or our website, uniquemartmedia.net forward slash learning. But for me at this point, it's been under 15 minutes. Thank you.